I decided that in this episode, instead of answering questions, what I'm going to do is a scene for scene recreation of the Homestar Runner Decemberween special, The Steep Deep. But it turns out I don't get to make those decisions. Welcome to Ask the Mean Maker, where I, Ricky the Mean Maker, answer your questions about mean making, mean drinking, mean brewing, and really any question you're willing to send to me. Our first question this week comes from Buzzcook, who wants to know if you can make a mushroom mead, and the answer is, you can? Our next question comes from Devlin, who wants to know if you can pasteurize an entire carboy of mead to stop the fermentation, and the answer is that, theoretically, this is possible, but... I cannot recommend trying to bring five gallons of liquid up to pasteurization temperatures at a stable volume to heat ratio, because remember, that liquid is going to be moving around inside, and the chances that all of it will be the same temperature at the same time is really, really low, and you're probably asking for trouble. Here's an easy one from Nick. If Ricky the Mead Maker, that's me, was going to put together a homebrew kit for mead making, what would be in it? The answer is a fermentation bucket with lid and airlock and honey. The second part is why doesn't it have like a bottling wand or a racking cane in it or a carboy? The answer is you should spend most of your money on your $6,000 home kegging kit. George wants to know about back sweetening, and if I stop my fermentation, sulfite, sorbate, and let it go sweet into the cans that way, or if I go all the way dry, add sugar back in with sulfite and sorbate, or do I just cold crash? The answer is, I don't make sweet meads, so I don't do any of those personally, but I never recommend just trusting cold crashing to keep your product from re-fermenting once it's packaged. I have known too many homebrew and commercial bottle bombs to recommend that. Our last question this week comes from Jeff, and I don't know the answer, which is why I'm answering it on Ask the Mead Maker. What temperature should you get the honey to for a boche? A boche is a mead made with caramelized honey. He was thinking about trying to sous vide rather than boil, because honey can caramelize at lower temperatures, and he knows that he could maintain his sous vide 158 to 230 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know if that would work, but I do know this. Honey doubles in volume as it approaches boiling, and I don't think that's something you'd want in a vacuum-sealed plastic bag, even in water, but I really don't know. So if you've ever tried something like that using honey in a sous vide machine or on your stovetop for any reason, I'd love to hear about it so I can actually answer this question someday. So shoot me an email, put a comment in the doobly-doo, and keep sending your questions. I'll get to them as soon as possible. Cheers.